Okay, at this point, we're ready to make an offer. How do we do that? Well, of course, I'm gonna find out what the property's worth. So what that looks like is we do market comparables and treat it much like when we're telling a seller what to list their home for. We wanna know what the other houses are selling for in the neighborhood that are similar so that you get the best value. And I will tell you that nothing makes me happier than getting you the best deal. You wanna play to win when you write an offer. If this is a new house fresh on the market and it's a good house and it's priced right, don't mess around because while you're messing around, other people are viewing that house and they might come and get it before you have the chance to. So. As long as it's reasonable, feel good about it. Another trick we can do is a cover letter, and I don't like to call it a trick, but it's something that can influence the seller to taking your offer versus somebody else's. And I'm gonna tell a quick story about this. So I had a client, I was on the seller side, had a client, we had multiple offers, and he got an offer at, I think it was 410. And uh, then we got another offer, and another offer. and. Ultimately, we ended up with three offers. Things were looking pretty good for Mike. It was gonna be a, a good day for him. And he accepted an offer that was $15,000 less than the best offer because that person had written a nice cover letter and told him why he liked the house. And he said to me, this person has an emotional connection and I'm gonna feel good about selling this. So while not every seller is gonna behave that way, it doesn't hurt to add a quick cover letter and make sure your realtor is giving appropriate notes. I'm gonna add one more thing to that. I can remember, it's happened more than once, a lot of times. I'll wake up in the morning and go to my junk mail inbox after I'm done cleaning up my other email and I'll see offer attached. And it is literally an offer that came in six, seven hours prior with no phone call, no presentation, and sometimes on million dollar plus properties, offer attached. You wanna tell the story, tell, tell the seller why they should take your offer. It's gonna, it's gonna make a difference for you. A pre-approval letter is something else that's pretty valuable. And while not every lender is gonna do that for you right now, ask. It doesn't hurt to have an email and attach that with your offer to say, yes, Mary and John are approved for this much money and we think it's gonna be easy for them. That kind of thing is gonna make it a lot easier for a seller to say yes and ultimately that's what we wanna have happen. The next point is be reasonable. I can't tell you how many offers we get on the selling side that are completely unreasonable and they just turn people off. And ultimately, I think that the buyer often gets a worse result. And I can tell you a number of stories. I'm not gonna share them today because they come with a lot of cuss words and that's probably not the time or the place, but I've had sellers who just say, no, there's no way I'm gonna deal with that person because they're completely unreasonable. And that person has approached in some other cases only to get rejected on something that would have got accepted had they been reasonable right off the hop. When we're writing our offer, we're gonna have a number of different details in there. There's price, of course, there's the deposit amount, there's the closing date, there's the terms, the inclusions. All of these things count. You wanna have a really strong negotiator craft this into something that is a complete package that's acceptable. And it's not always price, you, you need to know that. Other things you wanna include in your offer are a time limit. If you take and give somebody three hours, they're not gonna have time to review your offer. If you give them two days, they might have time to go get more offers. Talk to your real estate advisor, find out what is appropriate for the time and the situation and do what they say. They probably know how it's done as long as they've got some experience. Consider terms in your agreement. You wanna make sure that your butt is covered. You wanna make sure that things like getting the house clean and getting the junk out of the garage and that kind of thing is all embedded in there. Other things you can do to cover your butt is conditions. And this is very normal in most markets. If you're in one of these crazy markets where people are going unconditional, consult your real estate advisor, proceed with caution. There's a lot that can go wrong, but in some cases that's kind of how it's done. You need to know this in advance though. One other thing that you need to have is a condo doc review or a strata doc review if you're in BC. And let me tell you why. That's gonna tell you the health of the building, if there's any cash calls, if you can expect your condo fees to go from three to 700 in the next two months. Without that review, you're not gonna know what's going on. And I can tell you again, from personal experience, big mistakes can be made. So you're gonna wanna check that. In a lot of places, there's gonna be professional document reviewers. We can connect you with those people and we're happy to do so. It's it's money well spent. Give yourself enough time to close. You might think closing in two weeks is great and the seller is gonna love it and you're gonna love it, but in reality, that's not the way it works. There needs to be a bit of time between your condition removal and your closing. The lawyers won't even look at your file until you're unconditional and the banks need a little bit of time to get the money over there. Give yourself enough time. Typically, as a rule of thumb, 30 days should get most deals done. Um, we can do it faster, but it's not always the right way to do this. 
Another tip is pick the best dates to close. You might think that the first is the best day to close, but I can tell you from experience, lawyers are insanely busy on Fridays and on the first and the 31st, that kind of thing. We usually love to close our deals midweek, mid-month, you'll find that there's less noise, you're gonna get looked after better in the lawyer's office. And that's it, we've got more buyer tips. I can tell you more about that the next time we're out. Hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully that makes your transition easier. And of course, if you have any questions and you wanna know what you're missing out by getting the right real estate agent, give us a call anytime, never too busy to help.